Welcome back to Off-Label Veterinary News, your source for commentary on animals, medicine, and practice life. If this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's jump in to some of the stories we'll be talking about in 2018. 2018 will kick off with discussions around veterinary telemedicine. In January, the AVMA will convene in Chicago to discuss what constitutes a veterinary client-patient relationship, or VCPR, and how will that affect telemedicine moving forward. You can bet we're gonna hear a lot about apps and programs and websites that provide veterinary care throughout the year. Student debt may be one of the drivers for telemedicine as veterinarians seek alternative ways to make income. We've talked about the student debt crisis on this channel before, and I've conveyed my concerns about how student debt may actually delay future retirement of veterinarians, thus creating imbalances between veterinary supply and demand. You can vet that we'll be talking about veterinary student debt throughout 2018 and beyond. And while we're talking about changes with veterinary professionals, we can't forget that 2018 will be the year that the Veterinary Nurse Initiative, or VNI, will really come to the forefront. Not only is this change in nomenclature from veterinary technician to veterinary nurse important, but also it serves to show the expanding role of veterinary technicians within our profession. Expect to hear a lot more about the VNI in 2018. Pet owners will continue to discuss the cost of veterinary care and ways to provide more affordable access to veterinary services. Pet insurance, wellness plans, and monthly payment options will dominate the conversation around cost of care. In addition, the veterinary profession needs to examine the expansion of veterinary services provided by nonprofits and animal shelters and how that potentially affects the profession moving forward. The rising cost of veterinary care will be an important discussion to have in 2018. Americans will spend over $27 billion on pet food in 2018. We're gonna see advances in raw diets, freeze-dried diets. We're gonna see innovations in food distribution. We're gonna see home-prepared meals continue to skyrocket, as well as restaurant-style foods for your pets being delivered on your front doorstep. 2018 will serve up a buffet of new pet food options for pet owners. Pet owners will also have many questions around human grade pet food ingredients and how are pet foods manufactured, distributed, and where are ingredients being sourced? All of these topics are important and I'm actually looking forward to having these conversations in 2018. If we talk about pet food, we also have to talk about environmental advocacy. Veterinarians need to have more open discussions about the impact that animals have on our environment and our planet. Sustainable farming techniques and the humane treatment of livestock need to be talked about more openly in the veterinary profession. Pet owners and animal advocates are looking to veterinarians for guidance on these topics and we need to deliver. The opioid epidemic will impact the veterinary profession in 2018. In our weekly podcast, The Veterinary Viewfinder, we tackled this topic over a year ago and I must admit I've been a little bit disappointed in the profession's response to the opioid crisis. Instead of seeking ways to collaborate with medical healthcare professionals on ways to combat the opioid epidemic, the veterinary profession seems to have wanted to distance itself and separate us from the reporting measures enacted by Congress and state medical boards. My belief is that if we want to be taken seriously as healthcare professionals, this is part of our responsibility. Responsible use of opioids is a professional obligation and one I take very seriously. I think we need to have more open discussions on how we as veterinary professionals can help in this crisis. And while we're talking about drugs, 2018 will also be the year that pet owners ask for more cannabinoid treatments for their pets. 29 states now allow the medical usage of marijuana and eight states allow recreational use of marijuana. All of this leads to a lot of questions of how can this help my dog or cat who's dealing with a medical condition? It's time the veterinary profession takes this issue seriously begins to conduct research where appropriate, and have answers for the pet-owning public. Another area that pet owners are looking for answers about in 2018 is around alternative and complementary veterinary medicine. With mounting evidence supporting the use of things such as class four laser therapy, acupuncture, omega-3 fatty acids and other supplements, rehabilitation, 
Nutritional counseling and weight loss, veterinarians need to embrace these complementary modalities and make it a part of their everyday practice in 2018. The business world will be buzzing with terms such as artificial intelligence, synthetic intelligence, chatbots, and more throughout 2018. I fully expect that by the end of this year, most veterinary clinics will be able to employ some level of artificial intelligence on their social media, their business websites, or even on their telephone. While we're talking about advances in technology, I also need to mention something that I call pet care by app. Younger pet owners are turning to their smartphones to assist them in the daily care of their dogs and cats. Apps like Rover, Pet Coach by Petco, Dog Vacay, and Map My Dog Walk will continue to gain momentum in the pet care space. You'll also see these types of apps be integrated into smart dog bowls and water bowls. You'll see wearable activity monitors enhanced by synthetic intelligence. All of this adding up to pet care by app. I thought 2017 would see the advent of the super combos or the extended duration parasiticides, but it looks like the FDA had different ideas. But it looks like in 2018, we will finally see approval of extended duration products against heartworm disease, internal parasites, fleas, and ticks. I'm also excited to see the advances in immunotherapy and targeted immunotherapy in cancer. For many years, we've had a canine cancer vaccine against oral melanomas, but now we're seeing these technologies being exported from human cancer world into the veterinary realm. With the recent approval of the canine autologous cancer vaccine, or the canine ACV, against solid tumors like hemangiosarcomas and sarcomas, I expect to see more of these types of targeted therapies being used in veterinary medicine. 2018 may be the year that we start to turn the tide against cancer. I also expect to see advances in stem cell therapies and advances in antibiotics. 2018 will also be the year that pet DNA testing goes from simply who's your grand doggy to pet disease detection. I'm incredibly excited about advances in DNA technologies and how we can use that to better identify risk factors for our patients. 2018 will mark the first time that we have more choices, better products, with higher precision and specificity than ever before. DNA technology holds the promise of completely transforming the way we view medicine. Well, those are just a few of the topics I think we'll be talking about in veterinary medicine in 2018 and beyond. But what do you think? What are some of the topics that I might have missed and that you'd like to see us cover in the upcoming months? I want to hear from you. Well, that's it for another edition of Off-Label Veterinary News. If you like content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you'll be notified as soon as content like this drops on your internet doorstep. Until next time, keep living that off-label life. Happy New Year!